Hi, diddly ho there, grad filterinos, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. In the first part of this video, I gave you an introduction to the grad filter, how it works, how you can manipulate it, create one, and edit it after the fact. And in this video, I'm going to take you through some real-world applications of the grad filter, some best practices, and some of my favorite ways to use the grad filter to get some kick-ass results. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let me jump back on that image that we, that we looked at in the very first video. And to bring back up my grad filter, what key do you press on the keyboard? Let me hear you all shout it out. That's right the letter M. Okay, so we already applied a grad filter to darken the sky, and if I toggle it on and off, you can see what kind of effect it's having. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete that grad filter just by making sure it's selected and hitting the delete key. So, probably the most common application of the grad filter is to do what we just did, is to darken a sky relative to a foreground so that you can better control the dynamic range of your scene. And when you do this, when you have a sky that's evenly exposed compared to a foreground, that's what creates a very nice painterly effect to your photograph. You can see, let me close this out for a second. If I go down here to the tone curve and I just add the classic S curve to put some contrast into this photo, well, my foreground gets a lot darker and my sky gets a lot brighter. It's not a very attractive photo. However, I know that I can use a grad filter to both darken the sky relative to the foreground and brighten the foreground relative to the sky. And like I said, that's going to give me this very nice painterly look to my overall exposure. And again, this is probably the most common application of the grad filter. So let me show you just how that works. Okay, so I know I need to darken my sky and I need to brighten my foreground, so let's just do that with the exposure. Let me drag the exposure down here, and I'll drag the highlights down as well. Then I'll click and drag across my sky, something like that. Okay, now that sky is a really a darn a dark. It may be a little too dark. In fact, if I look at my histogram up here, I've pretty much pulled my highlights way off the top edge of my histogram. So I'm going to go back to my basic tab just really quickly and brighten that up so we kind of have a better looking exposure overall. Beautiful. Now let me jump back into my grad filters. So at this point, this is my sky darken one. Remember, I needed another one to increase the brightness of my foreground. So I can click new up here and then do the exact opposite. So can increase my exposure, and instead of increasing my highlights, I'll increase my shadows, and I'll put that across the foreground like that. Now, I don't want to blow out the highlights here in the river, so I can actually pull down on my highlights there, and that's going to help keep those in check. So now, with the application of those two grad filters, one to darken the sky, one to brighten the foreground, that's our before, and that's our after. You can see how much more interesting and dynamic and painterly and beautiful our photo has become with just a couple of quick local adjustments from the grad filter. How friggin' cool is that? And of course, if you decide, you know what, that sky is too dark, all you got to do is select it by clicking on its main dot. Pull that exposure back up a little bit. Not a problem. Say you want the foreground to be more saturated or sharper. Easy peasy. Click on that one, we'll increase our saturation. It's going to bring out the color there in those greens, and we'll bring up the sharpness as well. So this is such a cool, easy way to adjust our photo with a few simple clicks. And in fact, you can see from our raw file, which looks like this, to our final image, which looks like this. Man, how cool is that? So simple, so easy. But Who's to say that the only application of grad filters is to darken the sky or brighten the foreground? Absolutely not. Let's take a look at another couple of real world examples. How about this one? So this is a photo I took of an absolutely bonkers lenticular sunset in New Zealand a couple of years ago. Now I might want to start with the same kind of idea. I can go ahead and maybe darken my sky right, to help bring out some of the color there. Maybe add a little contrast. Maybe that's too dark. There we go. That's looking pretty. And maybe that's too blue. I can warm it up a little bit. How about that? That's looking kind of nice. Maybe another one to brighten up the, uh, the foreground here. You can see, though, that the left-hand side of the image is much darker than the right-hand side of the image. So if I want to even out that tonality across the frame, well, I can click on New here. And if I hold down Alter Option, you can see how it changes to Reset up here. 
Just click on that bad boy. Maybe I just want to do straight up exposure increase across the left hand side of the frame in order to balance what's going on on the right hand side of the frame. And now I can add even maybe another one with an exposure increase and a shadow increase to help bring up what's going on here on the ground. So now I have a more balanced exposure across the frame. I can maybe jump on my tone curve here, make some adjustments there. And you can see what the image looked like. Here's without any grad filters, there's with a grad filter. You can see, again, we're just doing all kinds of cool stuff to these images. How about another couple of examples? Here we go. Let's check out these trees right here. With this image, these mountains in the back here are really far away. They're about 35, 40 miles away from where I took this shot. So they're getting pretty hazy here. And what is one of the tools that comes with our grad filter? Yeah, it's the dehazer. So I can just crank that up. Whoops, I forgot to neutralize my exposure. There we go. So I can just crank up my dehazer, try to bring in some detail into those mountains and clouds in the background. Doesn't have to be an exposure adjustment, doesn't have to be a color adjustment. I just want to get a little more depth and definition to those clouds there in the background. How about another effect? Let's say with this image right here. You can actually use your grad filters as a kind of a form of a vignette a way to attract your viewer's attention to a very specific part of the image. So you can see here I've got this tree on top of the hill that's kind of got some light clouds behind it, but there's also some light clouds here up top. Well, I'd really like you to look right here. So how can I do that? Well, I can bring up a grad filter, zero everything out, and if I darken down the exposure and darken down the highlights, what's going to happen is those clouds are going to get much darker than the clouds in the middle of the frame right there. And so, as I make my adjustments to this image, for example, brightening it up, and doing a little tone curve adjustment, I can increase the brightness of those clouds there in the middle, and pull down the brightness of the clouds around it. You can see that I have a much lighter halo of clouds around that tree. Whereas, if I don't use a grad filter, that bright spot up here just pulls your attention right to the top of the frame. In all honesty, what I'd probably do with this photo is crop out that bright stuff on the top there to make it even more effective. But you can see, again, the grad filter, it's a very effective vignetting at the top to keep your eye focused within the frame. Now let's take a look at uh, one last example. How about this beach from New Zealand? You can see it's uh, another one of my favorite ones, that, that really common effect of brightening the foreground or darkening the sky. Um, and I like that approach because, again, it gives you that very painterly look. So if I dial that in, if I increase the exposure and increase the shadows and plop that across the frame here, maybe a little more contrast. I can add a new one, darken down the sky a little bit like that. Now we have a much more painterly look across the photo. If you find yourself, like I just did, making an adjustment that you that you make frequently, for example, darkening the sky with respect to the foreground or brightening the foreground with respect to the sky, and you don't want to keep recreating those adjustments over and over and over again, you can actually create presets to really help speed up your editing. So let me go ahead and delete those again. Say I want to brighten up the foreground and I want to do this over and over and over on a bunch of images. Well, I can dial in, you know, a, a sort of a, a setting that I think I'm going to use a lot, like a one stop exposure increase with some shadow bumping as well. Do something like that. Then I can go up here and see how it says effect custom. If I click on that, it brings up this contextual menu and I can go down here and hit save current settings as new preset. We can call this something like brighten ground. And then we can make a new one where we darken the sky. And we can save that one as a preset as well. 
which we're going to call, what do you think? Darken sky. So now anytime we have an image, let's go back to our grouping here. How about this guy right here? So now anytime we have an image where we know that we want to darken the sky and brighten the foreground to get that kind of painterly look, all we got to do, bring up our grad filters, and you can see our darkened sky and our brightened ground are here within the preset menu. So I can click on that brightened ground. Instantly, I have an adjustment that I know I can use. And the same thing, if I want to darken the sky, all I have to do is go up here and click New, then go down to Darken Sky, and bam, I have an instant adjustment. That took less than 10 seconds to adjust my image. Give me this beautiful painterly look. And let's have a look. This is what it would have looked like without any grad filters. This is what it does look like with grad filters. It's a far more attractive image, and that took all of 10 seconds thanks to those presets. So I hope that gives you guys a really, really good understanding of applications of the grad filter tool, when to use it, when not to use it, and how you can use it to do all kinds of cool, creative things to your photos to really bring out their best. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our free weekly newsletter for all kinds of more photo tips, answers to your questions, gear reviews, inspiring photos, and more. And if you'd like to check out even more in-depth Lightroom Develop tools, you can download the entire Lightroom Develop course that I've created. It's a super comprehensive course all about Lightroom by clicking right here. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.